Hi, welcome everybody to uh, our second class of uh, at the Amud, where uh, we discuss actually um, in this mini series the weekday nusach. So, um, just a quick review. Last week we talked about the beginning of um, of the shacharit service, and we spoke about the structure of the service and <clears throat> the beginning of the shacharit service in terms of its um, music. And we said at the beginning, the first couple of units, we actually use the melody of the Torah blessings. Right? And basically that is the melody that we use for Bilkot HaShachar, Baruch Atah Hashem, Erokeinu Melech HaOlam, Tukei Achivrim, etc., etc. That's the music that we use, and we use that um, melody also uh, for the next section of Korbanot, and also for the next section of Sukei De Zimra. I want to pause at that point, um, where we come to uh, Shirat Hayam. Shirat Hayam, as you know, the Az Yashir, is the last um, of the Mizmorin, the last of the sections of Tsukei de Zimra, just before the closing paragraph, which is the Chatima de Bracha, the Yishtabach, as you remember last time we said that Tsukei de Zimra is defined by a Bracha in the beginning, which is Baruch Shamar, and a Bracha at the end, which is Yishtabach. So Yishtabach, we're already going to be in a different mode, musical mode. It's actually a mode that is called Yishtabach. Um, if we talk in the um, term of the Jewish modes, so we have Yishtabach, we have Ahaba Raba, we have Yekum Purkan, etc. Mishaberach. But in order to prepare for that change of mode, we already switch in the end of Shirat Hayam. Okay, have that in mind. We're going to come back to that in about 15 minutes. Okay, what I would like to go is to the Ma'ariv service. Why? Because the Ma'ariv service, we have to understand the Ma'ariv service in terms of the musical uh, scale that we're dealing with. It's gonna be easier for us to do the um, Shema and its blessing part of the Shacharit. Make sense? Okay, so just like, if you remember last time I talked about it and I said that the um, the Shema and its blessings, right? I call it a sandwich because we have the Shema, which is in the middle. Then we have two blessings before, which is the Yotzer Or and the Avarava. And after that, after the Shema, we have the blessing of redemption. Okay? So the Shema is a kind of a sandwich. So if you remember, I said that that sandwich appears twice a day. We have it both in Mariv and in Shachar, right? In Mariv, we have a two blessings. Again, we have two blessings, and the theme of those blessings is exactly like in Shacharit. One is going to talk about nature, Hama'ariv Aravim, God's ability to change light, day, darkness, light, all that kind of stuff, right? And the second one is Ahavat Olam. And Ahavat Olam is parallel to Ahava Rabbah that we have in the morning. Then we have the Shema. And then we have the blessing of redemption. So again, it's the same theme, different words, but it's the same theme and both end with Ga'al Yisrael. Yeah? Okay. Now, since we understand that we're talking about the same themes, we can understand also why there is a resemblance resemblance it's not going to be exactly the same but it's going to be a resemblance in the musical scale okay fine now if you remember last time i mentioned something that is i called it the fragish or whatever um mode and if you think the easiest way to think about that scale is habanagila 
Pa pa da 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 Whatever. There is no such a thing as the Jewish mother. It's just like a lot of our liturgy is is that when you hear it sometimes in movies or whatever that is, it's like da 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 da. -da. I don't want to go into the music theory, um, explain what exactly happening, whatever, because that's not that important. Uh, if you want, I'm happy to explain that, but it's not really that important. What's important is that you have it in your ear. So every time in doubt, think of Habanagila. Okay, so if I'm right, it's that that. Okay, so every time in doubt, just think about Havana Gila. Try to concentrate on Havana Gila. Run Havana Gila a couple of times in your mind or phrases from it, and you'll be good. Okay, let's see how that works in the tefillah. Okay, so I'm going to go into the marriage service now. I'm going to go back to the shachrit in about 15 minutes ago, uh, 15 minutes from now. Okay, marriage service. Very quickly, what do we have there? Okay, we have a, an intro, which is Vehu Achum, because we can't. Boom, jump into the into the barf. But basically, it's a little intro, getting people ready. Then the barf. What's the barf? Barf is a call to action. Okay, guys, we're davening. Join me. That's basically what you're saying. Bless God. And you want to get everybody's attention. This is why we say it requires a minion. And that's the call. Okay, so we do it as a minion. We do it as a group. Right? Okay, so we have the call for action, that's the barfu, then we have the two blessings, as I said, the, the Shema, the blessing of redemption, then we have Hashkivenu, right? And Hashkivenu, okay, interesting, uh, a lot of discussion about it, but basically, um, Hashkivenu um, is an extension of the blessing of redemption in terms of its theme, and another idea if you remember, actually, you don't remember. I don't think I spoke about that last time. Okay, we have a principle about tefillah that's called smichat geula letfilah. It means we need to juxtapose, we need to attach the geula, redemption, to tefillah. Tefillah is amida. Okay? We're not supposed to have any interruption between the two. So in Shacharit, we don't. We say, Baruch Atah Hashem, Gal Yisrael. Boom, immediately we go to the Amida. Works perfectly. In Arvid, we say, Baruch Atah Hashem, Gal Yisrael. And then we have a Shkivenu. And here in Chutz Laaretz, we have also a collection of Tzuki, Baruch Hashem, Leolam, Baruch Hashem, Bayom, etc., 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 and only then we go to the Amida. So what's going on here? Ah, so this we have to understand why we have that all the stuff. We're going to try to crunch it into two minutes only. If you remember, we said that Tfilot represent the Korbanot. Right? The sacrifices in Bet Amidash. And the sacrifices in Bet Amidash, what do we have? We have Tamid, the daily sacrifice of the morning. And we have the daily sacrifice of Ben Ha'arbaim, of the afternoon. That's parallel to Shacharit and Mincha. Ah, what is Arvit? Arvit is parallel to the burning of the leftovers from the Korbanot that were brought during the day. Okay? There is no special Korban, third Korban that was brought. No, it was just the leftovers that continued to burn throughout the night. Okay, the fats, 
חלבים והימורים, it's called, okay, fine. And therefore, just like there was no obligation to bring another korban and there was no another korban, yes, there was a burning of the leftovers every night, but theoretically, theoretically, if everything burned during the day, they wouldn't have that going on throughout the night. Therefore, if you heard that before, the concept of Arvit is Rishut. Right? Remember that? Did you hear that before? That Mariv doesn't have the same halachic status as Shacharit and Mincha. Obviously, it's, it's, we are obligated and it's a custom that, it's not a custom, it's, 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 it's a Rishut that we all accepted you know, thousands of years ago. Okay, I get it. But on the basic, basic, basic original level, it's not as obligatory as Shacharit and Mincha, okay? It has a lot of impl uh, uh, implications. So for example, um, if I make mistakes in Yale Avo and stuff like that, I don't repeat in Mariv, but I do repeat in Shacharit and Mincha. Or for example, that's the reason why we don't have a repetition of the Amida in Mariv. Because since it's not obligatory on the same level, I don't need to make sure that everybody is going to be Yotze, is going to fulfill their obligation to, to do the Amidah. And since the whole reason why I have a repetition of the Amidah is to benefit those who were illiterate, I don't do that in Arabic. Bunch of Allah ramifications, as I, as I said. Why this is important to us? It's important to us to understand why we have a break, so to say, between Ga'al Yisrael, between Ge'ula and Tfilah. Okay, so that's the reason, because we're not so strict, because it's Rishut, it's not on the same halachic level as Shacharit and Mincha, and because of that, we have a little buffer there, in the Ashkiveinu, even though it's an extent of what, you know, when we, and we explain that the Ashkiveinu is also a, an extension of the same theme of redemption. What about, now you're going to ask me, what about the um, the psukim that we have in Chutz Laaretz, at least we have those psukim. If you look at the art scroll uh, sidul, I'm looking at page um, 264, second paragraph, right? Baruch Hashem leolam amen vaamen. Baruch Hashem etzion shochen Yerushalayim aleluya, right? Etc. All that paragraph that we say every day. Yiru eneinu bismach tevenu. A bunch of reasons. Why it's there, um, but according to some of the opinions, at least that in certain times of certain points of history replaced the Amida. Those psukim replaced the Amida. If you will see, for example, you will see that those it's eighteen verses parallel to the eighteen blessings. There's a lot of ideas going on. I don't want to go into that. I can give like a whole shield just about that. But the point is that this replaced the Amidah at some point when it was not safe to recite the Amidah. And therefore, if that was instead of the Amidah, then you understand that there's no actually hefsek, there's no interruption between Geula and Tfilah. Okay, that's the theoretical. Let's go back to the musical. I'm in Hava, Nagila Hava, da 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 that's the Nusach for weekday Mari. I know that a lot, not a lot of people do that, but this is the correct Nusach. Okay? Okay. Or I bring it from the bottom. As I mentioned before, last time, when it comes to 
the davening, the nusach, I have much more flexibility than Torah reading or Haftarah. Torah reading Haftarah, you have a set of trope, and each trope has a specific melody, and that's the way you do it. Here, that's that. That's the key. Ta -da 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 so basically, you have freedom with that. Or I have a to lam. Kiem chayein, verechamein, uvaim nege, yomam balayla, veavatha al tasir mimenu, leolamim, baruhata roshem, ohev amo Israel. And here, a lot of people make the mistake, by the way. They say, oh, have a more Israel. It's wrong. Oh, have a more Israel. Okay? It's not, oh, have a more. Which arm is this? Americans? No, Israel. So it's got to be, oh, have a more Israel. The, the punctuation is extremely important. So make sure that you have, you look at the punctuation. Most of our Sidurim are pretty good about that. Um, one of my hobbies, I collect Sidurim. Why? Because I like to I like to look at the punctuation. And uh, sometimes I see something, oh, wow, I didn't think about it. And that changes the whole sentence to me. Okay. One of the biggest things that drives me crazy every time I hear somebody Davin's Mariv in the middle of the week is after the Shema, at the end of the Shema, they say, how do you sing it? Come on, somebody be brave. Hashem Elokechem Emet. Hashem Elokechem Emet. At that point, I want to go to that person and say, good Chavez. Even if it's a Monday or Tuesday. Why? Because that's the perfect Nusach for Friday night. That's not the Nusach for weekdays. And I hear it almost every day. <laughs> Whether it's Mariv or Shachrit, it's the wrong Nusach. Because our Nusach is Hava, Nagila Hava, Adoshem Elokechem Emet, Hava Neranena, Adoshem Elokechem Emet. By the way, if we're already talking about that, it's Hashem Elokechem Emet. It's not Hashem Elokechem Emet. Right? Hashem Elokechem, God, your God, truth, Emet. God, Phrasing, it's just phrasing. Let's see, Bisrin, could you say the sh the Friday night and the, the weekday? weekday? Okay. That's the Friday night, which is in the minor key. The weekday, okay, moving on. Again, something that has to do with the phrasing. It drives me crazy when people say, people sing it. Um, I close this to do, I don't know. When people, when people do it, when people do it, Moshe of Ne Israel, Ha Anushira Anushira Besimharaba. No, I'm sorry, Anushira Besimharaba Bamukulam. It's not really correct, and the arch troll is not 100% here, but it's not that. Lecha Anushira, right? They gave praise to you song. How? Besimharaba. That's fine. Now what? Vamruchulam doesn't go on Besimcha Raba, but rather Vamruchulam, and they all said what? Michamocha Baelim. They said, colon, Michamocha Baelim Hashem. Okay, it's just something to have in mind in terms of the phrasing. Okay. Okay. Okay, 
Or if you want to show off. But this has nothing to do with the Nusa. It just has to do with if you want to show off your vocal abilities. Okay. Um, and the same goes for the next paragraph. Every time. And the answer, pa 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 pa. And that's believe it or not, that's the whole Marib. Then we have a half Kaddish, same melody. I'm just making this up. I'm just on the same key. I'm there the whole time. The whole time it's I'm expanding the Havana Gila. That's all I'm doing. It's kosher. Just making this up. But it's kosher. Right, then how is it the intense the Avanagila? How is it? Why, why is it half Kaddish at times and full Kaddish at other times? Excellent question. Half Kaddish functions as a separator of different units of tefillah. Okay. Other, not only half Kaddish, Kaddish in general. Right. Okay, okay now, full Kaddish, nice. full Kaddish you're going to find only after Amidah. So sometimes it's going to be a while after the Amidah, which tells you if it's going to be a while after the Amidah, like for example, on Monday or Thursday, tells you that those paragraphs between the Amidah and the full Kaddish are expansions of the Amidah for the Hanun, for example. Okay. Or Ashrei Uvalitzion. 
all that stuff, because these are expansions. So when you say the full Kaddish, it has to do with the Amida. Why? Because what makes the full Kaddish into the full Kaddish? One line. What, what, what is it? Kabel Tzlauton about Hon? May the prayer and the supplications of your people, Israel, be accepted before you. What are those prayer and the supplications that you're talking about? All the petitions and everything that we said in the Amidah. So Titkabel, that line that makes the full Kaddish into a full Kaddish, that line relates to the blessings of the Amidah. Okay. Great question. Then we go to a silent Amida. And after that silent Amida, it's a full Kaddish. Because what? Again, the full Kaddish yeah, that's it. goes, it relates to the, to the Amida that we just said. It, and it's the same melody. Okay, I'm just showing up. That's a whole marriage. Remember that even? You're in a good place. You just need to show more words. But it's the same thing. It's the same note. I'm not changing the melody. Either. Okay? Same melody. It's the same thing the whole time. Okay? Think have an Aguila and you have the Mari. Okay. Good. So this is Mari. Which brings me now back to the Shacharit. And here, believe it or not, we're going to use the same mode that we used for the Mariv, but in a little bit more condensed way. So in the Mariv, we had the full Fregish scale. Means it was this. Right, a full, a full what scale? We call it in the Jewish in the Jewish terminology. We call it the Fregish scale. It doesn't matter. You're not going to find it anywhere. But it's the it's if you if you Google it even the, the the Jewish mode, and you will find or mode, um, the Yishtabach mode. Now that's what we're hating. This is was it was the Ahavaraba. That's that. Okay. 
Okay, that was good. Now, what we're dealing with is half of that. Okay, it's what we call a pentatonic scale. Pentatonic, penta, five. So it's basically five, but not exactly. So it is five, but we're gonna take like one from, like, it's like, um, you know, you wanna say, um, I don't know, what's a good example? Okay, how many numbers between, um, I don't know, zero and 10? 11. Zero, one, two, three, four, until 10. Okay, so we're gonna use some of the notes from the octave. It's the same note, but octave lower. You, you know that like musical notes are going in eights, right? Okay, Yeah. so. Sorry. Da, 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 da. So basically, da, 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 da. That's my scale, but I'm going to use also the lower register from the previous octave in the same way. Da, 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 da. It's all da, 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 da. I'm just doing half of it. Da, 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 da. Okay. Okay, and what happened? So I was in the Torah blessing mode, remember? I'm in page 76 in the arch call. Why are we to Hayam by Avasha? The bed of the Hemisha, the bin to Lot, Kemoe, and the Maim Azim. Right? By our Israel at Ayadagula, Shasaduna, the Mitzraim. By Yeruha, Metadonai, the Yaminu Badonai, Moshe, Abdo. Right? So far, so good. That's what we learned last week. Torah blessings. Here we switch. If you look at the end of the Shirat Ayam, the end of Az Yashir, I'm at the bottom of page 80. If you happen to have the arts procedure. This was my biggest thing every morning I hear drives me crazy because this is Shabbat Nusach. It's not weekday Nusach. We don't sing on a Monday morning, Yishabashimcha <laughs> This is Shabbat. But it's not, it's not wrong to say it that, is. is it? It is? <laughs> Look, Bill, this entire class is about trying to get the right melodies. So for the purpose of this class, it is wrong. <laughs> okay, gotcha. For the purpose of this class. It's not wrong in terms of the words, obviously. Nobody's gonna shoot you, unfortunately. Some shoot, some places, maybe they would. Um, but, you know, the whole thing of Nusach 
you got to understand, this is something that is very, very much part of our culture, and it's very, very important. Why? You know why do we have even Nusach? Why do we have a different Nusach? High holidays from Shalosh Regalim, from Shabbat, from weekday. Think about it. In the old, old, old times when people were not so knowledgeable and people didn't have calendars or whatever, they knew it was like they went to shul and if they heard, you know, Tira, pa, 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 you know, it's a holiday. And it's not only that they knew the holiday, of course they knew the holiday because they built the sukkah, because they, 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 you know, they baked matzah, of course they knew it's a holiday. But it brought the whole baggage, the whole thing that it's associated with. Okay, I'm going to ask you a simple question. You walk into, into shul on, on Kol Nidre night, and instead of singing the melody of Kol Nidre, the chazan is going to do, I don't know, a nice, beautiful melody, but it's not the, the melody of Kol Nidre. What do you think, I mean? I, I like that. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're gonna, That's oh, so bad. I, I think that most people are going to, whoa, what are you doing? Right? And then Hazan Prowl is going to lose his job. You know, it's, The whole taste of Yom Kippur is right. It's just like it, you know. It, the, it's hard to erase what you're familiar with. It's harder to erase that. You don't need to erase. That's the whole my point. Why would you erase? That Musach has been with us for hundreds of years. You don't need to erase anything. It's just like what, what happens is that in recent generations, we forgot that stuff. We didn't forget. You know what happened? It's a new phenomenon. What happened was the children started davening on their own. Whether it's Bnei Akiva Minyanim, whether it's during congregation, with all that kind of stuff. That's a new phenomenon. And kids did not learn the Nusach yet. They didn't spend enough time in the shul to learn the proper Nusach. And they started leading services on their own. Guess what? Those kids become adults. Became adults. And when they become adults, they continue to lead services without knowing the Nusach. And, they, and the kids that learned from them knew even less. And the kids that learned from them knew even less. And so we ended up in a, in a, in a, in a culture where people don't even know the Nusach anymore. It's a new phenomenon. A hundred years ago, everybody knew Nusach. I never, like, I grew up in the shul. I, I sat in the shul as a kid. I had two choices, either with my father or my grandfather. That's it. There, there was no junior congregation. There was no juko. There was no Bnei Akiva Minyan. There was no none of that stuff. And because I grew up in the shul, and I grew up in a shul where, like, you know, pretty much everybody was a Holocaust survivor. It's like, you know, like a little shtibble that was taken from Poland, you know, pre-war. Anyone, any of the guys, it was nothing fancy. It's like a little shtibble in, in Israel. Any of the guys that actually went to Daven, they knew the Nusach. Some were better, some were not as good, whatever. Some had better voices than others. Some were more musical than the others. But they all knew the Nusach. When I became a Bar Mitzvah, I will never forget it. I became 13. It was Motzei Shabbat. And my father sent me to Daven, Marib. I didn't, you know, I knew the Nusach. I started. <laughs> Because that's the way I grew up with that. I knew it. I knew that it's 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 a weekday, but you know, Motzei Shabbat is considered weekday nusach, and that that's the way you go. Today I go to shul. Maybe not today, but whatever. Sometimes I go to shul, and then like you know, and they go. Trust me, crazy. It's Monday. It's not Friday. But that's what they know. 
Because the only time they were in shul for Mariv was Friday night. So they never learned the Nusach. Okay. So we are in the Havanagila short, like half Havanagila mode, right? Um, Tarararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararar
ועל כל דורות זרע ישראל, עבדיך, מלכנו מלך אבותינו, ועלינו גואל אבותינו, יוצרנו צור ישועתנו, עודנו מצילנו מעולם שמך, אין אלוהים זולתך. תהילול אל עליון ברוך הוא מבורך משה ובני ישראל לכאנו שירה ושמחה רבה ואמרו כולם שירה חדשה שברכו גאולים לשפחה על שפת הים יחד כולם מודובים ליפו ואמרו אדו שם ימלוך לעולם העם. צור ישראל, קומה בעזרת ישראל, עובדי חינומך יהודה וישראל. ברוך אתה אדו שם, ועלינו אדו שם שבו קדוש ישראל, ברוך אתה אדו שם זה סמפינג, פעל ישראל. אוקיי? Uh, the Amidah next time, next week is going to be our last one, and the Amidah, this is going to put it in context, the Amidah is going to be exactly the same for Shacharit and Mincha. I, just, I want to just uh, jump into Mincha for a second, because the structure of Mincha is very, very simple. What we have is opening, which is the Ashrei, then we have the Amidah, then we have the conclusion, which is the full Kaddish, okay, Tachanun, whatever, but Tachanun, as, as, as I mentioned before, is expansion of the Amidah. We have a full Kaddish that relates obviously to the Amidah, and then you have Aleinu. That's it. Right? It's very concise tefillah. Right? There's no intro, like there's no preparation, there's no none of that stuff. Okay? It's boom, boom, boom. Basically, the whole tefillah is the Amidah. But since you can't go right into the Amidah, you need some sort of a mental preparation, tiny bit. So we have the Ashrei. Right? Okay. So, but both in Shaharit and in Mincha, we have a repetition of the Amidah. And when we have the repetition of the Amidah, then we use the same Nusach, which is the Amidah Nusach. Okay? That's going to be next week. Next week, we're going to deal with the Amidah Nusach. And here we have like two um, uh, traditions. We have what we call the um, general Ashkenazi Nusach versus the, the Lithuanian or Berlin Nusach, whatever. We get to that uh, next week. But so I want to kind of summarize. We have the Marit service. It's the Habanagila. That's the whole Mari. Okay? That's the Mari. Then we have Shacharit. Shacharit is the beginning. Is all through the Birkot Shachar, all through the Kobanot, all through the Suke de Zimra. <clears throat> and then at the end of Sukkot Zimra, we switch into the half of the Havana Gila. Ba-ra-ra-ra-ra-ra-ra-ra-ra-ra-ra-ra-ra-ra-ra-ra-ra-ra-ra-ra-ra-ra-ra-ra-ra-ra-ra-ra-ra-ra-ra-ra-ra-
I'm just making this up. How does a composer decide major or minor? I'm sorry, again? How does a composer decide when he's based on, based on inspiration, based on what they, they, you know, a composer, they have like something in, you know, it's like a poet, you know, they have something comes to their mind, inspiration, and they decide, they hear, they hear sounds, and then sometimes, sometimes like in the old days, like, you know, Mozart, uh, Bach, and all those guys, when, so they worked on commission, and sometimes there were spe specific requirements, right, um, and special, like certain works, um, it's very clear what were the requirements, right? Um, for example, like uh, a monarch or whatever, or something, some ruler that knew how was limited in his or her abilities to play. So they had to write something that suits their that's abilities so and their talents. And so like that's that's sometimes you add, so this is how you end up with the, you know, the, uh, what's that famous uh, piece? Um, on a G string, that that person that whatever it was a uh, I don't know some Kaiser or whatever something whatever they knew on, only how to work on one string right so so I think it's Bach that wrote like the whole piece on G string that's it on only on one because that's what he who pays decides what you know so uh, but basically it's it's an inspiration or sometimes if you want to give it like a certain character. Major has a different character than minor. But in any way, um, for our purposes, the number of ways in which you can play with that phrase is unlimited. And this is why um, it's very difficult to put chazanut or nusach in books. 
And for many, many, many years, there was a lot of resistance to do so because they said, like, if people are going to learn that, and that's exactly what happens today. People learn. I'm talking about everything professional. Yeah. And they learn from the Nusach books. But, you know, they know only one version. They know what they read from the paper, and that's it. They don't know how to play with that and create their own Nusach and create something that is actually it's to some extent, it's a little bit of a lost art. Um, but back to our um, uh, class, um, we are going to try and uh, sing those philot in this in the right mode. So we shall have or actually correct phrasing, okay. I'm correcting myself. It's not Yishabach Shimcha La'ad Malkeinu. That makes some sense. Yishabach Shimcha La'ad Malkeinu. Malkeinu is the subject. La'ad is the description of how it's going to be Yishabach. So you need to understand, you need to have a basic understanding of language, of the grammar, if you want to do the correct right. phrasing. But thank God, most Sidurim would have good punctuation that helps you with that. But yes, I always say to people, before you lead a service, even if you know the music and the Hebrew, do yourself a favor and actually read the whole thing, but the translation, English. Make sure you understand every word. Right. Phrasing makes sense. For me, it's very, very clear when I hear somebody leading the davening, I know immediately from the first sentence, I, I know whether they understand what they're saying or they don't. In most cases, they don't. Well, you're a professional. Uh, it's nothing to do with being professional. It's <laughs> to do with just knowledge of the Hebrew. All right. You should know, you should know what you're saying. If you're in the audience, you should know what you're saying. You should, if you're leading the service, if you're representing me, I hope you, you know really what you're should saying. know what you're saying. You, you should know what you're saying. You have, can you hear me? Yes. So you have Yishtabah Shifa La'ad Malkeinu. So I'm looking at the arts going in front of me. You yeah. have Pama after Malkeinu, but Correct. nothing before it. You know. So, so if I'm I'm reading that, how, 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 it's it's not well. What they did is it's actually, you know, it's correct. But when you when you sing, you have more pauses. I mean, you could. It's not the greatest, right? So this is why you need to understand also every word. But at least you understand it's not Yishabach Shim Chalad Malkeinu. You understand that. Yeah. It can't be. Right. Because it's not Yishabach Shim Chalad Malkeinu. If anything, it's Yishabach Shim Chalad Malkeinu. And if you, by the way, you're going to look at the Koran, you're going to see Yishabach Shim Chalad Kama Malkeinu. For example. Or if you're going to look at that English and you say, Yishtabach may, well, what is Yishtabach? Well, because here in English it says, may your name be praised forever, our king. So our king, I know it's Malkain. Fine. Forever is what? La'ad. Be praised is Yishtabach. Okay, may your name or your name is Shimcha. Okay, now that you have that, try to put it, put the English in the order of the Hebrew and see how it makes sense. And you'll see, oh, Shimcha Laad Malkin. I promise you, if you're going to do that, you'll find it. You, you will understand that. 
but it requires and, you of actually looking and figuring out like you know what's the meaning of every word yes and then the bottom one the last the last phrase melech al ha'olamin is Correct. that one phrase right okay look at that look at that so melech Okay, so our scroll translate king, God, life giver of the world. Right? Yeah. Okay. So Melech. Look at the English, how they did that. Melech is king. Comma. Right? They put a comma in comma in the English. Okay. God. Comma. Because these are all. Descriptions of God. Life giver of the world. Period. So if you're going to do it in English. King. God. Life giver of the world. Why not in, why not in Hebrew? Melech. El. Cheyolamim. Right? Oren has the, the commas. I'm sorry? Colin has the commas, correct. But um, so Colin is, is much better in terms of the punctuation than the art scroll. But even in the art scroll, it's very good. It's just that look at the English. If it makes sense, then apply that to the Hebrew. But you can't, it doesn't always, you know. Yeah, it does. Yeah. You'll have to change the order of the sentence. Well, yeah. That's it. But, you know, and work with the dictionary so you'll know which, which word is which. I understand. It's a pain. But, yeah. you know, the, some of the, uh, what's the name of that R scroll signal, by the way, that is word by word? Oh, the linear yes. thing? Inter the linear. Linear, linear. No, no, linear. Interlinear. That's it's a, a linear translation. It's a linear translation. Yeah, they have linear. Tra I, I, I'm not so sure if it's like 100%, but it's, it's pretty good, I have to be honest. It's pretty good. And, and then you can see what words relate. And if you can see, you can see the structure of the sentence. I mean, you guys are all intelligent people. You understand how the structure in English, how the phrase, and you apply it to the Hebrew as well. Once you know which word matches which. Well, the Quran also. The Quran in certain places is linear, but it's Correct. on two pages. Correct. Across from each other. Correct. Okay. 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 Thank Very you. good. So when I see you in shul and you go and you dab and please know Yishtava Shimchalad Malkeinu. You know, unless it's Shava, unless it's, and even then it's not Yishtava Shimchalad. It's Yishtava Shimchalad Mal. If you notice, Greg, when I dab in Shacharit, I said Yishtava Yishtava Shimchalad Malkeinu. Everybody sing. But if you listen to me, that's the way I do it. Okay. I've been doing it for almost nine years and nobody, no, nobody is copying me yet. <laughs> <laughs> but at Thank least I'll, I'll keep doing that. Anyway, Bye. enjoy the rest of Hanukkah. I'll see you next week, same time, same place. And we're going to do the Amida. And that will conclude our weekday service, Nusach. Thank you. Good night. Bye. Bye. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>